Uh, good afternoon. I'm Jim Ash. I'm with uh, Metro or WMATA. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the scope of some of our challenges as it relates to flooding um, and, and some of the challenges that uh, our, our many entrance points present and some of our interim responses. Uh, I'll tell you at the beginning, I don't know all the answers, and if you have suggestions, they're gratefully uh, accepted here. I should also start out by saying that it's, for us, it's not simply a matter of flooding. It's also surface water run-on. So there's a, a continuum between the two as we start looking at uh, various, uh, various things. We have a number of fan shafts and vent shafts that daylight onto the ground in the Federal Triangle area. In addition, we have escalator shafts that daylight and, uh, and also our escalator entrances. Um, this is a map showing the green and yellow lines as they cross the National Mall. This is uh, 7th Street here, um, and I think we're, uh, see, we're right in here perhaps? Yeah. Um, and you see Archives and Navy uh, Memorial Station. That will also have an escalator entrance and an entrance shaft. Likewise, the blue and orange line across the National Mall, and this is, of course, right through the heart of the Federal Triangle area. Uh, F stands for a fan, fan shaft, while uh, a V in front denotes a vent shaft, but essentially they're grates on the ground. Um, most of you will recognize this map as the uh, crescent-shaped 100-year floodplain, uh, the map that was uh, put into commission uh, following the uh, decertification of the levee. The point of this map is to show you just how many different facilities we have in and around the 100-year floodplain as it currently exists. And also we've got Federal Center Southwest down here as well. Obviously after the post and panel structure at 17th Street here is put into place, this map will be changed via Clomar. But that's not the end of the story for us. There are at least three different possibilities that are out there for what the map will look like after that, um, after that uh, structure is put into place. I am, uh, to give you an overview, the um, yellow line here that goes up like this is a, a ponding uh, surface that was developed by the Corps of Engineers in 1992. That's a little bit dated. More recently, we have the purple line here. Um, which is the Tetratech 2008 study, and I understand that that, right now I understand that that's going to be the new uh, interior uh, drainage, 100-year uh, flood area. But we also have a more recent Greeley and Hansen uh, version, which is this uh, shaded blue area here. reason that this is important to us is it helps us understand what the scope of our challenges are as we start trying to put in remediation uh, projects. Which, which vent shafts do we need to focus on and why? And that question becomes important when we go to places like NCPC for approval of our projects or Commission of Fine Arts. They're going to, they're, one of their first questions is, well, why do you have to do that? And it's a lot simpler, simpler for us to say, well, we have to do that because we're in this, uh, this zone that someone else has defined for us. So what do the problems actually look like for us? Um, this is a vent shaft at 12th and Constitution. This is what it looks like on the ground. Uh, you, this photo may look familiar. This is almost exactly the same one that Jane used in one of her earlier presentations when she was talking about sandbags. And you can see some sandbags here being stockpiled. Uh, but essentially, it's a fan shaft on the ground that provides this huge inlet to our tunnel structure underneath Washington, D.C. Uh, these are some on the mall, again from the, uh, from the air, and now on the ground. And this one is located on 7th Street, right in the middle of the mall, and we have the sandbags out there from a recent storm event. So let's talk about the solutions that we're looking at. First, on a temporary basis, it is this, we do use the uh, sandbags frequently. Um, ahead of most storms, about two to three days in advance. We have trucks that go around and sandbag the areas uh, to put up the, uh, for the shafts that we know are vulnerable to flooding. Longer term, 
Uh, I'm the project manager of a, a project to look at uh, correcting this to the extent that we can, recognize that we can't do, uh, we're somewhat limited in our options when we're working on the National Mall. One of our, uh, one of the solutions that I'd like to do is put in these, chin essentially extend the elevation of the uh, fan shafts up above the ground, but that's not really a viable solution when you're talking about something that's in the middle of the National Mall. Uh, it, it starts getting into the visual, um, impacting the visual aesthetics of the mall. I'll also say, it, uh, just to get it out there, that it's not really practical for us to just put a, a plastic liner over the tarp, uh, over the top of the uh, vent shaft, because then we're starting to affect the safety of the tunnels. We have to have these vent shafts open in order to move water or to move air in and out of the system for safety purposes. So what we're talking about for the sites on the mall is to essentially put a six or 12 inch lip on top of the existing concrete structure. So put it around here and then grade the, uh, add fill in to grade it back to the uh, surface of the surrounding mall. And this is one of the solutions we have in mind. Um, if we do it for the site on the mall, we're also gonna have to raise the curb of the, uh, the street curb there to, to make it all work. This is something that New York uh, City has done. Uh, essentially, it's a bike shaft, uh, excuse me, a, a bike rack, and just a street seating, uh, street furniture. And what they've got here is a metal lip where they've raised the elevation of the uh, uh, the shaft six inches or so. It's made out of stainless steel, and that alone makes it a little bit pricey for us to to consider here, particularly given the number of vent shafts that we're looking at. Um, if we were to look at doing something like this, we'd also have to start taking into account some of the uh, federalism architecture that's predominant in that part of the city. Uh, again, CFA would have some comments on what it, the end product looked like. But this is another solution to the problem. Uh, I hope that we get to see these when we go outside for our walk around. These are actually right outside the, the building. Archives is right here. And these are two that exist already. And essentially, it's, it's the, from my mind, it's the, the best solution for these fan shafts and vent shafts. What we've got is just a two foot lift of concrete. I think there's stone uh, cladding on the outside with a stone lip. And you can see the, the grates in here. But that gives us enough of an elevation lift so that if we start having flooding in the street here, we've still got protection from the water running off into our shafts. Um, this is a, the same solution we talked about for F Street, but again, raising it six inches or even 12 inches and then grading it back down to the elevation of the surrounding terrain. Uh, that's kind of an overview of what we're looking at. Uh, I'll take any questions you might have.